All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Tuesday edition of the MSP Initiative Live. We're here with, that's right, your favorite guy, Mr. Kenny P. And we are getting ready and getting the bus washed and tailored packed for the channel. Get strong, four. baby. We're going to be in Texas in, in less than two weeks, San Antonio, um, Houston, San Antonio, Austin. Um, Right. <laughs> you I, oh, wait, I got it. I got it. I had to think for a second. It's Houston, San Antonio, Austin, Fort Worth, Dallas. There you go. Okay. There you go. I was having a, a little little mental lapse there. So there you go. how about gonna... this? There we go. That's not that's it's not a surprise anymore. What's that? Oh, surprise road trip. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love how uh I love how Keith Keith came back and said, let's see, we haven't even really gotten the show underway. And he's like, how, yeah. come you, how come you never have true Americans on the show going to visit America's only team? I mean, I was born in America. How about you, Ken? Were you born in America? I was actually born, born in the birthplace of America. So, you know, I mean, it all started right here, right? Plymouth Rock and then Philly, not too far behind with the bell. I, I, so, I, I was going to I was gonna say the country, the country did start in Philadelphia last time I remember. I mean, the Declaration of Independence. Constitution, where, yeah, where did they land, though? They landed uh, here. Okay. Fair, fair. I'm not, not. But I'm saying not Boston. I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving props. Boston and Philly. How could someone from Dallas even be considering saying something about America? Let, let's, let's, let's let these guys in. These are our favorite two, our favorite two uh, callers, if you would. <laughs> uh, so, so Keith, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear it, pal. How can you not <laughs> respect uh, Captain America, Roger Staubach? All right. Never, I I'll 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 take Roger Staubach. I got it. That, I love I, Roger I, Staubach. How, but, how old is the NFL like a hundred years old, but the country's like two hundred fifty years old? Like, it's when the country became great again. <laughs> it's when the country became great again. Yeah, okay. the doubt. You know, remember when they built Texas Stadium, the original Cowboys Stadium, and they asked Tex Stram, "Why is there a hole in the roof?" And he said, "So God can reach down and touch His team whenever He wants to." But but the true but the true the true so story. God's is, may, God maybe forgot about His team for the last twenty or so years. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. But the truth. Uh, uh, it's been a dirty communist plot. The true the true, <laughs> true the true story is they ran out of money, and that's why there was a hole in the roof. <laughs> no. No. I don't know. I think they did. I think they ran out of cash and they just like let it so. ride. Okay. All right. We'll have to, we'll have to fact check that one. Yeah. I, that he, I, I see, I see, I see Pete on here. What's going on, Pete? Guys, how are you? Pete's ready to do some driving. Where's my hat? Yeah. That's, right. that's you lost the cowboy hat already. That's exactly right. Oh, a cowboy hat. Oh, you're going to get yeah. Pete going again. Yeah. That's, that's it. I'm not going to lie. That's what it was. That's all. That's all right. I got my. Uh, I got all my my accoutrement on the hats right over here. I'll make sure we we have the right hats. Darren, you uh, you, you gonna join us somewhere on the you road? See that? Oh, it's not working. Oh, I'm working. I'm working on it. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a game time decision, but I'm gonna see what I could do. See what I could do. I need to get some barbecue. So it's it's just not the same without. Uh, it's just not. Chick-fil-A doesn't do barbecue. How's that? Uh, Chick fil Actually, that that's not. A hundred percent true. So I was at Chick-fil-A the other day and they had a barbecue chicken sandwich. Yeah, I saw that. First of all, first of all, it ain't gonna be the same as the Texas barbecue sandwich. So I, I, mean, I didn't say that's like same. saying that's said. like saying you got a Philly cheesesteak in, in, in Texas and it was it was the same. Come on, dude. Uh, okay, let me get let me get this out of the way. All right, so we haven't quite gotten our giveaways done yet, but if you missed us in, in Orlando, check out the MSP Community Block Party highlights. Uh, we have some more of these coming up this year, so we're going to put up a keep me up to date form on here at some point, and we're going to let you know when the next one's coming. But there's like some interesting plans in the works, and they only get bigger and better from here. I hear there's a boat somewhere in the mix. Let's so think about that. A boat, uh, and how about a band? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, too far in advanced. We'll see. So, um, and then of course the channel strong tour we just talked about. If you go to msbinitiative.com slash channel strong dash strong, you can see 
Here are our sponsors. Here are all the weeks for the rest of the year. So you know exactly when we're coming and where we're going to be. And if you, you're an MSP and you want an invite for this Texas trip, throw your name in the hat and we'll make sure to get you there. So, uh, so those are all of my, uh, and then lastly, sessions, right? This and every other session we've ever recorded, and there are many hundreds, are in podcast format or video format. You choose what's best for you. Back to you, Cotton. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> there's Pete. There's Pete. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, boys. I'm ready. You're not, there's no way you're wearing those. I no. wore these down at the uh, Threat Locker. That was George. That was Absolutely. a Ken move right there. You just did a Ken move. There's no way you're going to wear those boots the whole time. I, I'm already feeling the blisters coming through the screen. <laughs> I'm, my blisters from Threat Locker are still uh, melting. Oh. You city boys. You city boys. Yeah. I don't you know. know. That hat doesn't really strike me as a cowboy hat, uh, Pete. I don't know. It's more like an Indiana Jones type hat. I don't know. It's a, it's a, no, no. It's actually a planes hat. It's like when you're out working. You don't wear your stats and you wear your your working hat. So, okay, it's just been know. maybe bent around for, over the years. Know. Where'd you get that hat? Disneyland on the Indiana Jones ride. <laughs> is, they, is, is, that, <laughs> is that ride even is that a thing? I don't think so. I don't remember. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah they yes, it is a thing, and they brought it back. It's in California. I don't know if it's in the Florida. But yeah, it's in it's, in, it, it's uh, in Florida. It was shut down through COVID, but they just opened it back up. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to have to make sure that that place isn't available as you're driving by and stop. Minnetonka, Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Sade pops in. She's put in California in her rear view mirror. She comes in. She's like, yeah, it's in California. Great ride. Where have you been for the last 12, 15 minutes? It's not uh, a ride. It's a show. No, it's a ride. She says it's oh, a it's ride. All, see, that's the, that's the difference then. The one in, the one in uh, Disney World is a, sh a live action show where they do all the stunts from Indiana Jones. No, this is a kind of a roller coaster based ride. You're in the, uh, you're in the Jeep and you, you go through, you know, yeah, it's a ride in California. So it is, so it is different. Yeah, the one, in, the one in Disney World has actors and they pull people from the audience. And then at one point in time, it looks like they're punching out the audience member on accident. <laughs> they did some switcheroo. It's pretty cool, but they do the all the explosions, the big ball rolling down the thing when he runs down and the ball, the boulder rolls over him and he you know goes down. The whole thing. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's part of the ride. The, the, but you, you go into the ball coming, you know, the big boulder coming down. Yeah. Ah, it's, interesting. Yeah, I don't think we have a ride there. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna tell you, I've I've passed by Disneyland, but I've not been to Disneyland. Yeah, you gotta go in. Yeah. Yeah, different experience definitely, definitely been to disney world many times oh okay well disneyland i did disneyland me and brett mesh did, did disneyland to see the difference because we're disney freakos and uh it's definitely smaller and um it was easy to do because we popped in and out real quick it's smaller some of the rides are longer but we didn't go over to the california adventure side that's what i need to do next Oh, wait a minute. It's split up. Uh, it's like two different it's, parts. It's split in half. The old Disneyland is on one side, and then on the other side is California Adventure. But California hear... Adventure it is the old parking lot and yeah. where you would leave your dog. <laughs> Remember that? They had the kennels off front where you could. Oh, you that's could... right. Yeah. I'm aging myself. But yeah, I was, I was back there, you know, years. And by the what way, was it, what was it like at the park before electricity? Oh, it was, it was scary. But I, I have to say, Ken so generously took us out to eat at Downtown Disney. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. yeah that's right. And then we, that was the night that that one guy had 12 old fashions in an hour. Yeah. He was a Marine. I'm, so he says, so he's alive. But it was, uh, I, I was, I never had such an expensive uh, pizza order in my life. <laughs> I, I, I always think that's rather rude, but I, I've told you that before. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it was interesting to say the least. But hey, look, talk about technology since it's the technology show. <laughs> oh, that, that's oh, what... is that that's George's hard pivot right there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, you know, Disney Disney World slash land slash all things Disney, they're very heavy adopters of technology. Yeah. They they've been using RFID inside the parks forever. Yeah. By the way, you know that Disney World was not supposed to be in Florida. Well, it's where he could get the land the cheapest under a pseudonym name, right? It was, it was actually 
targeted for Irvine, where the 405 and 5 meet. The original yeah, proposal is like a long too, monorail. It was, too, it was too expensive. Well, they basically well, it wasn't it just too expensive. It was too populated. Look what happened to Disneyland. That's he he was so pissed off when you could be basically walking down the street and see the park. That's why he went to Disney World because he could buy up all that land and put it in the yeah. middle of nowhere where it's not there's not a main street driving by through it or near it. Yeah. Yeah. And all the technology in Disney World is underground. That's right. You don't see a tell you'll never see a power wire. That, you'll that's never see that's true. Have you have you guys ever done a behind the scenes tour? It's very expensive, and I didn't want to wa waste my day under the ground. I wanted to waste it above the ground. Yeah, I yes, I, I have. And, and a little bit of trivia: my my oldest daughter was a, was an actress for Disney for a few years. That's right. That's right. The one that looks like me. I showed you a picture, Ken. But if I peel, if I peel <laughs> back the onion, this guy always has something interesting, which is good. Uh, by the way, I, I believe Mr. Keith Nelson had many cigars down in Florida. Yeah. I, I, in fact, I just smoked my last. The lady kept giving them to me. Goes, you're my best customer. Wow. And, yeah. Guy, guy, guy knows what he likes. Plus, I brought like 10. So. You had a lot, you had a lot of cigars, but according salad, to you. Salads, salads, like salad. salads. Yeah. Wow. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, I need, guess we need he, to tell Quick Pass to bring some because he had baggies of it. Well, that 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 was the leftover that hadn't been distributed at the party, right? You should bring some on Channel Strong so we can smoke them while we're out. If he has them, I'm sure he's handed them out. We'll have to ask. <laughs> um, I'll bring some along when you come to California, uh, Pete. Well, that won't be for some time. And, and yeah. I have some, I have some decent cigars. Uh, I don't know if the gas price, if the gas prices keep going up, I, I might, you know, it's going to, I better start walking now, pulling the trailer. Our, our, uh, <laughs> the, 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 this, Get a this horse. The gas station that's normally cheaper than Arco hit uh six ten this morning for regular. And I was uh, hoping you were saying six ten a.m. and not six ten dollars. How, how'd the theme song go? And we're moving on up. <laughs> Well, you know, California is a special kind of stupid. We have the highest gas tax. We have a special blend because we don't understand it's, it's global warming. So we think that us having a special blend will stop the pollution from Arizona, the, Texas, the and all the neighborhoods. The special blend sounds like I'm putting coffee in my tank. Yeah, and it's and it's and it's um and the worst thing is if you drive a car that wants premium. Um it's nine it's it's two percent less um and uh, there's only like two refineries that do it and they both coincidentally always have fires whenever there's a gas shortage just <laughs> like over the weekend we had an underground leak again and so um yeah we're we're a special kind of stupid here in california wow i remember as we were driving from california to salt lake city for the first time um where we had where we were going through the mountains trying to get into utah or whatever you know the path is and then all of a sudden like i thought i was going to make it and i didn't and it was like five dollars a gallon and that was back last year that's not yep. now so uh of course i was i was driving a pickup truck in a u-haul box but that's <laughs> in can well you know, you know we all go to like when we go out to the river which is actually in arizona or nevada where we go Everyone drives their, you know, their their truck and their suburban everything out with their boat and fills up on the other side of the river, and say, you know, I remember times I was saving a dollar fifty a gallon, and when you're filling up a boat and sea dues and reserve gas, that starts adding up. Yeah, big time, dollar yeah. fifty a gallon. Jeez. that's no joke. That's not five cents going a little bit further up the road. Uh, no. <laughs> although, it's, you know, back to technology. Apparently, the Gas Buddy app was experiencing some downtime because there was such an influx of people checking the gas prices around them. So. Yeah, and, and sadly, and that was my only political comment, high energy prices are so regressive. And, and when you think about the people that bear the expense, it's the poor and lower class. You know, guys like George who have mega bucks can go buy a Tesla whenever they want, or- I don't, ha or I don't have any Tesla. I have no Tesla. I, I, I am a gas. 
I'm a gas driver, man. We have a few, but that's not the point. But also, your cell wait, phone. Wait, 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 wait. He means his technicians have a few. Anyway, Correct. go ahead. Correct. So you 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 know when you're self-employed, your 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 gas is paid by your company and really by your customer. The guy who who's who's at the burden is the poor guy who has to drive a 20-year-old car because he's economically challenged. So it's not efficient gas-wise, has to live far from work because he's economically challenged and has to, you know, and you're going like they're bare, they're are burdened with the cost of of uh, this green new deal, which is which is regressive. You can afford solar. You know, it's like they give you tax credits for solar, but you have to have income for the tax credits to have value. And, and I and I just think that's a horrible thing that we don't look at. You know, we're we're asking the poor to pay for our energy uh, policy, which is wrong. I mean, we should. That's it. And now now you guys think I'm a real liberal, I guess, but yeah. Well, I mean, the current the current problem other than the gas is, uh, you know, current events. By the way, we enjoyed having Matt Lee on last week. It was always interesting. We did bring up Ken's favorite topic, but I'll just bypass that now because no reason to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> by the way, just I watched your Matt Lee episode to me out of and there's a lot of guys that are out presenting security. To me, Matt Lee is top notch. He knows what he's talking about. He's not condescending. Some of them are very, I know you don't. He seems extremely dedicated to wanting to help people in the channel learn how to do things. I, he's one of my favorite uh, cybersecurity mentors ever. And, I, and I've worked with a few, you know, you know my background. And I, and I think he's top notch and a, and a true um asset to pax eight i yeah, really he, think he's he, a great guy he, he, he's yes. great he's a great guy with a great beard second best beard in the channel wow long. Uh, long. i gotta tell you statement i haven't uh, shaved in two weeks look I, didn't, <laughs> he, I just didn't shave this morning if i was online you could see it it's just it just grows uh, like this i mean who knows sometimes matt lee just pops up on on these tours so no, he's a great guy. I, I look, you know, I've met him a few times in person, and he's one of the few that I think MSPs that are learning the ropes are not intimidated by going to him. Right. You have, he's that, even you MSPs have, that have been around for a while aren't intimidated by him. You have other people who represent themselves as cyber gurus who are, I've, I've read their comments. You're going like, damn, we're supposed to be helping each other in community, and you're, and you're putting a guy down for not knowing. At least he raised his hand and asked a question. So I, I always wanted to tell you, Ken, I don't think I ever, I think that's a great ask. Between him and, and Rex Frank, solid, very solid. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. The Rex Frank, I got many and, phone and, calls and, and, and the morning of Rex Frank. And sometimes Rex Frank pops out on the tour. Yeah, we know Keith was at the same spot that Rex Frank was at. That's where I met him. I've known Rex Frank since he worked at Alvaca. Yeah, and I don't know if you, if I told you at one channel event, he uh, surprised me and stood up and said, uh, came in and said, I want to thank someone for being a mentor all these years. And and I was looking around the room to see if Oli was there. And he said it was me, <laughs> which I thought was, you know, surprising. Yeah, yep. Frank, we, all, we get all, good all people. people. All good people. So, Ken, you brought up a, a well, story. Except for one, but I just won't mention Ken's name. Hey, that's not <laughs> accurate, but not nice. Um, Ken, you brought up a story yesterday about um, Google and Microsoft in this, you know, bidding war for, you know, this SaaS-based XDR company. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw, I think I saw a headline saying, I think Google might have taken the lead on it. it yeah, well, it, the thing is that Google hasn't officially said that they have, but it's interesting that Google's taken the lead on something that they haven't, you know, they're trying to sneak in, but they're not doing a very good job of it. But they may get it. And, and it's, uh, I think, what was the worth? $2.5 billion or something like that, or $4.5 billion. Darren, Darren says yeah. they bought them. Oh, there you go. Done. Well, they're Done. trying to keep up. They're trying to keep up. But um, I, um, I would say that Google has a long way to go to catch up to Microsoft when it comes to security. So I mean, who, who's heard of SaaS-based SDR or XDR? That's the first time I heard of it. 
Well, no, it's a cyber reason does the same stuff. Yeah. It's a, it's a co competition with cyber reason. <clears throat> I, 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 I had just never heard it, man. I really yeah. did. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously they're, they're trying to catch up. I mean, it's what everybody just look at what all the, uh, the you know, the players in our, our industry are doing, right. The PSA and the RMMs and buying up all these tools and who's at the front door. He's at the front door. Yeah, so I have carpet being installed in the ghetto here. In the they're ghetto. Going in and... Yeah, in the ghetto. Yeah, something. Tells I told me you the ghetto. story behind that, Ken. I think it's a great story. Some, something tells me your fish pond's not in the ghetto. Well, I I, I added a, a turtle to it. Oh, dude, I think I saw the, the fish. good work. Yeah. So so speak on the security front. The other thing that's big in the news right now is. Two things that, that are, are top of mind. One, this whole Ukraine-Russia thing from a cyber standpoint, right? Like it sounds like a lot of U.S. facing banks and other, you know, municipal, you know, type, you know, you know, power, electric, you know, uh, gas, trains, whatever, all, all under attack a little bit from, from the other side of the ocean. So that's number one. And then number two, it sounds like the current the uh, current administration has said, "Hey, we've decided that we want to now regulate cryptocurrency." Yeah, <laughs> it's funny they're following China's lead on that, um, which is interesting. As far as the uh, uh, Ukraine Russian cybersecurity, I could tell you now that it's public knowledge. Um, we were told to, to watch those sites and capture packets nine months ago. I don't know if you know, I, um, the ports of LA, Long Beach, West Coast ports are attacked over 10,000 times a day. Wow. And we, we manage those. And, and, and when you think about it, it'd be, you know, someone that wants to down our economy. If you, if you think that, if you follow the logic where the new wars will not be conventional, there'll be cybersecurity. That's even going to go over nuclear, which was as uh, anyway, the uh, crippling our economy by shutting down the West Coast ports would be a, 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 a move for someone. I mean, a pretty major move. Uh, and so uh, it just leads me to believe that we were anticipating this for eight to nine months. Well, that's crazy because on the other front, it looks like I'm, I'm seeing an article right now in the feed. He's like the digital iron curtain, how Russia's internet could soon start to look like a lot like China's. Basically, Russia came out and shut down Facebook and Snapchat and uh, Sade's favorite social media, TikTok. <laughs> okay. They just started shutting down all of that stuff. They said that they right. didn't think that was that was that was putting out proper information. Well, if you want to, you know, you're trying to you think about it. It's hard to say this is without offending. Somewhere, somehow, someone's justifying the attack on Ukraine to the people. I mean, we, we and and so you'd have to filter the narrative. You can't win a war without some popular backing. It's very difficult. I mean, you look through history. Somehow, you know, someone's telling the Russian people that Ukraine deserved to be attacked. And so you'd have to shut off you know, I could see that. You, you, you have to filter the narrative. Especially when you, I, you know, I think you thought this was a five-day war, you clean up, go home, and, and it's now being extended. You well, know, think we, about our we, Vietnam well, we, or Afghanistan. Well we, know, well, we know that, you know, cyber attacks can be just as damaging as kinetic attacks, right? Missiles and bombs. But I mean, it's, you know, so, so everybody's favorite Tony Stark in real life Elon Musk comes out, he gives all these Starlinks show up in Ukraine, right? Hey, you can't get internet by the traditional jump online, right? right? And he starts distributing all this Starlink. He can tell us about that in a second because he just got one. <laughs> and then I just saw uh, literally the next article over is, uh, yeah, the, we be they believe cy a cyber event is disrupting satellite internet in Ukraine. <laughs> Well, you know, to me, and, and we'll let Pete come. I thought it was amazing when I start when you still see these stories come out of Ukraine, and the power still on, the internet was still going. I just thought that'd be the first thing that Russia would attack. 
yep. was was download. You know, there you're going where people are has, still have full electricity and the internet's going and phone services working. If you look at a lot of the Middle Eastern yeah, up wars, until, up until last week, they're still getting the packages delivered. Yeah, or you the one video I don't know why they're showing a, a place that's getting bombed. And a guy was riding his bike and another guy's walking his dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it, that just struck me like that was the last thing well, I'd be doing today. You know, it's funny from a technology standpoint, too. It's a, everything that's happening there is affecting us here. Did you see did you see all of, of talking about Russia and the cyber attack, cyber attack conter, concerns? Cloudflare, Crowd, CrowdStrike and Ping Identity are offering free security services to hospitals, water and power utilities because of this. So I thought mm-hmm. that was kind of, it's interesting that they're willing to do this. They're, there's got to be a real concern if now they're coming in and saying, we're going to offer this for free. And then of course, the next question is, can MSSPs join in uh, on, on this, on the free stuff, the free uh, offers for these security services as they're worried about this coming to the United States? Free for 30 days, then a three-year commitment after that. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> no, no, wrong, wrong company. I know, so- I know, I know. <laughs> a three a three year commitment with auto escalating pricing, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Listen. Nice. <laughs> we're we're all we're all joking about the same thing, but uh, well, that's only if your war goes for thirty days, right? Like you gotta I'm, make, I'm you gotta, actually I was actually looking a little deep into it. It on says day, on the, day on day twenty nine, you better cancel. It's not thirty days, by the way. It's a uh, and it's a project. It's called the I don't even see. Oh, it's called the Critical Infrastructure Defense Project. Provides free cybersecurity services to U.S. hospitals, water and power utilities. And then it says uh, zero trust solutions, endpoint protection and intelligence services from all three. And then the goal is to help organizations implement a zero trust model for securing their networks, endpoints and identities and threat intelligence. In addition, the project offers security roadmap to implement step-by-step security measures to defend against cyber attacks. So, so when you go to register it, you got to put a credit card in before you turn it on? I know, right? Noble, it's a noble, great thing they're doing, but I can only imagine the the charitable line item on their on their tax returns next year. Reach out wow. through the website. Yeah, it doesn't it just says visit project website, see what's available, review the critical infrastructure defense checklist on the website. It does not say. But I mean, listen. Obviously, they're trying to raise the tide when it comes to security because they know it's lacking. Well, I, I, I'm, you know, you know, take the, take the, you know, obviously Visa, Mastercard, PayPal, all these companies, you know, and there's a whole bunch of them that have suspended services in in Russia. I, I'm, I, I would almost that if I was those companies, I would have been super worried that, you know, like we just got chips here in the United States over the last three, four, three years or so, right? Like. Did they even have that over there? I would have been I would have been super cool, you know, questioning the security situation in general, but well, you know what's weird? Something that's happened, uh, it, it, I don't know, it just popped in my head because it happened this morning. My wife was shopping and went to well, she went to get gas at Costco and her car didn't work. So she immediately, you know, calls me and says, Hey, I'm like, Yeah, it's fine. So then she Leave after waiting in the line at Costco because the gas is cheap. She had to wait there for a while, couldn't get gas. Goes into Costco, does her shopping. Same thing, card won't work. So she's like, she calls the bank. They're like, everything's fine. We don't know what the problem is. And all of a sudden, there's a line of people. All their bank cards were stopped working. So it's like, is some what's going on there? That seems a little wonky. And it got to the point where my wife's thing said it was her pin, but she's it's not her pin. So I thought it was very interesting to see something like that happen in a, in a group because my wife looked over and there was five other people doing the same thing, trying to use their same bank card and all of them so, were working. So, so, so the credit card processor went down while you had like a line of cars at the gas station. More than likely. And it was it was the gas station and the, you know, inside all of Costco. Wow. That is the wrong time. Yep. Yeah. And she's wow. like, and the funny thing is the lady tells my wife, you should probably call your bank and get that worked out. My wife's like, um, I think you guys need to call somebody. Look at all these people in line. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> wow. I, you know, I hate, you know, I, I'll, I'll do a drive by, right. When you, since we're talking about credit card processing, since that seems to be one of the uproars on the internet and in, in the sandbox over the last few yeah. weeks. Yeah. So, 
Um, the industry, the, the industry does have consolidation, and yeah, it does happen. And you know, you, everybody knows the playbook, right? I mean, as as Darren so eloquently said, the uh, thirty day thirty day trial, three year contract. And Ken, Ken, stop stop using debit cards. Come on, credit cards, my friend. No debit cards. <laughs> you want points? You know, come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's twenty twenty two. Uh, well, Never, well, how listen, listen, listen Darren. Uh, how are not everyone's Darren? a chicken guy like you. <laughs> no, no, just there's there is no scenario where anybody should ever use a debit card unless you literally have no ability to control yourself and just uh, it's yeah. So that's it. You just explained oh. me to a T. I can't control myself. <laughs> there you go. Going back. To, I mean, uh, when we, when we started doing when we when we just started back in what 15, 16, doing international travel, Darren. The only card we had with that international transaction fees is a PayPal debit card, buddy. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're missing. You're missing. You know what? Be grab changed. a fee and get get the fringe benefits. Get the points, man. <laughs> so you're you're paying for the points at that point. Worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, it's coming coming from a guy who's who's going to lose all his points. I'm not. No, no, no. So you misunderstood that too, Ken. I'm not losing them. They're just devaluing unless I book a bunch of stuff. So that's which I've done now. So they're, they're so not, they forced you to book a bunch no, of stuff. They, they don't. You don't force you. They just you know they're going to be. The value is going to be not as much as they are today. So I'm. I so you should. So stuff. you should book all of your channel strong tour hotel. I, I I have booked a couple things. So George, I I I call them out because he said, <laughs> oh hey, he said to us on this call, hey anybody that needs some points, you know, I got a bunch of points that well, I got to use. You right? not, not, then, not not somebody hey, like you, George. George, then I reached out to him because you know Texas. These some of these events, some of these hotels are going through the roof, and Darren's I, like, I already nope. took care of Georgia's hotels. That's all set. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> Darren. That, that could prove that could prove to be a costly <laughs> statement, Darren. Oh, well, well uh, talking about point evaluation is. I, you like, know, now, now. I was just about to say when Chick. I just feel totally jilted expensive. at this moment. <laughs> what's, the pro- what's the problem, Pete? Uh, Pete, Pete Salty. I just feel jilted. Point. Like you guys are grabbing up all the points, Darren. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling the love, Darren. Pete, Pete, Pete I'll be. In, I'll call you right after this call. Don't worry. <laughs> Do something special for you. That, 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 now, oh, Pete, you know, Pete, he's told me this before too, and I haven't had the nothing can't, special. Can't, I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna tell you what. Darren doesn't like praise, but Darren's done a couple of good, nice things for my nonprofit, and uh, I really appreciate. I, I try to be generous a guy, but you know, when we deal with Ken, we're dealing with normal people. So it's all other things. So. <laughs> what's, your, what's your nonprofit, Pete? So, we have a, a nonprofit to help sailors that are uh, active duty or separating to mentor them, help them, or if they can't go home on a holiday, we sponsor them through donations. So Darren That's helps awesome. sponsor a sailor to send them home for the holidays and where he probably normally wouldn't have been able to go home and sat on the ship and missed his family. So it was very, we appreciated that. So. Very nice. Very cool. You hear the violins in the background. I was going to bring I, I out, gotta, the, I, I was going to bring out the puppy with what's her face singing on it, you know, to give everybody dog eyes. So. I have All a right. tear welling up Pete, but the, Hey, so. Did, did we tell everybody about what we're doing with the Channel Strong trailer going out to Texas and riding be, around? It's not going to be painted orange. That much I can tell you. All right. It's going, it's going to be, I, it's going to have a big star on it though, right? Is, am, am I able to share <laughs> my screen? I can do that, Keith, right? Keith, can I ask you something? Aren't, yeah. yeah four, four stars would be so, a great yeah. team. You guys got one. One star. Got five <laughs> rings. <laughs> Five rings. One, one, one star is just a rating. And you know what? And we're good to Santa Claus. Dude. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go out of limb, Keith. You may not even been alive while that happened. I, I was alive when they started. Time, folks. <laughs> yeah. I I'm mean, 100, I'm 158, George. They were they were using Morris code and that the Santa Claus event still hadn't happened yet. No, I was I was alive when that happened. I wasn't alive when that happened. This is not this is not yesterday, my friend. No, I, was... I, I think I think I think it's dead and buried, man. I really do. I haven't forgiven him. I, 
I watched. I watched. I watched. I haven't forgiven them. You weren't even there. Have you seen my beard? I was the one getting snow snowball. <laughs> I mean, that was me, dude. Nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah, nineteen sixty-eight. George, yeah. George, he's a Dallas fan. They all live in the past. Oh, you <laughs> say, Ken? That was brilliant. That, that, that By was the good. way, that I've always good. noticed your jerseys. I have Bobby Orr's autograph. Nice, me too. Somewhere yeah. back when I was growing up, back in the '60s, George, you used to be able to go watch um, Chicago Blackhawk games as a kid. You, you could watch the uh, practices. We we would take the L down there and and. Um, they give us hockey pucks and, and use hockey sticks. And that's how we played on the ice. And I, and you know, when you're, when you're uh, poorer, you, you, no one, none of your friends ever had a new hockey stick. So you didn't think it was like a big deal. It was like, I have the cooler hockey stick and they would give us hockey sticks and we would steal electric tape from our dads and retape them. And uh, yeah, we, th that was back when hockey wasn't as popular. The, the practices were open. Yep, yep. Bob, Bobby, Bobby, Orr, invented Bob, ice, George. Bob, Bobby Orr is still one of the nicest people alive. Yeah. yeah. Guy is okay. guy is just all class. And by the way, when they tell the story of how he stepped over Derek Sanderson in a gutter in New York, it's a hundred percent true. He literally was walking down the street in New York, stepped over what he thought was a bum, and it was Derek Sanderson in a gutter. Oh, kind wow. of like Allen Iverson stepped over Ty, uh, Tyron Lue. <laughs> yeah yeah now derek derek sanderson one of the best lines ever i bought the world a drink and they showed up <laughs> i brought the world the drink and they showed up okay well i mean if that's the case i mean we've been doing that for about 20 years guys yeah dude <clears throat> derek sanderson was was the first million dollar hockey player one million, huh? In One the, million in dollars. The, you, you know what, Ken? Gun. What do you think? Can I can I buy this for your for your for your wall? Is that good? Can we do that? <laughs> Is he taking a leak on him or stepping over him? I can't tell. Uh, that's that's a step over. <laughs> that's a step over. <laughs> I told you you need to you need to Google his high school football videos. Allen Iverson. Yes. Yeah, I hear he was good. He was talking about practice. Was, Practice. You're talking about I practice. I, I don't think he was practicing back then either. Yeah. That was just pure talent, man. Yeah, he, he's pretty awesome. Yeah, craziness. Um, a lot of work at that front door, Keith. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Stop running when they come to the back door. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Pete, let's get your let's get your review. Did you did you put your Starlink up? Uh, yeah, but it's, it's not functioning right now because I have to mount it in a better spot. So I'm waiting for my mount to come in. So I have better coverage. So you never, so I, had a, I had a lot of spots. In. No, no, I did. It, it, you turn it on, you basically, it's like hooking up a ring doorbell. It couldn't be any easier. Wow. And you, and the you, speed you turn good. it on, you join it via, you know, Wi-Fi right to it and it synchronizes right up and boom, done. Boom. So, piece of cake and are you and, replacing your connection or supplementing your connection yeah we're gonna have two we're gonna have two love so the, the house the house can have one and then we'll, we'll fail it over if we need to but can we can we you know can we put so i got dish? 300 300 meg synchronous on fiber right to my house so can we can we put that dish on the on the bus cannot can't because it's <laughs> it's geo placement it's, it's wow. so they take they align it to the geo where it was um, licensed to. That version is coming. That's very that that one is going to be the real game changer, and it's it's the next phase. So that will wow. be. Uh, I think that, Darren I, mentioned that before. I did. I do. Yeah, he did. He mentioned that before. It's, it's, that. it's coming to it's coming to Ukraine next week. Oh. The portable one. <laughs> I mean, is, quick, let's hope quick movement. Let's hope there's Ukraine still there next week. But yes, I hear you. 
but uh, no, I mean, it, it was uh, a breeze. I mean, you just turn it on, you have their app. They have a great app too that you can point up to the sky and it'll show you where your coverage is and not. And you just basically set it up and put it in the direction that tells you you could do a little bit better. Can you get a little higher? Or, but for the most part, it just plug and play. I mean, hmm. I, I was, it was honestly no harder than setting up a ring doorbell or a ring network. So. Yeah. Interesting. So, and then, and then Darren, why don't you, you know, do, do you, is your, you've done now many electric cars, right? Do you recommend that now instead of the gas or are you still a gas guy? I have done many electric cars. No, not really. No, I know. I, mean, I, can, tell you, I can tell you all about them. Yes. I, I know. Yeah. I definitely have more car knowledge than most, but uh, I definitely have not had that many, but, and that's by, you know, by choice, but uh, yeah. You know, so, so what he's matter. asking is, do you like the, the, the hybrid or the electric Mustang or, or do you like your gas guys, gas guzzlers? I, 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 I would never not want to have, you know, I like having both, honestly, but you know, <laughs> gotta have options, but he's just a toys guy. He's not no, going to tell you which guy, way. but you know, the, uh, the problem with the, with the electric, you know, what they're saying, all these, everybody wants to, you know, ramp up production and do this, but they, the materials for these batteries are still, uh, you know, a lot of it comes from not friendly areas right now. So uh, they're like, well, how is that going to happen? So that's when, you know, everybody wants to drastically increase output, but it's, uh, there's hurdles to that. <laughs> and you can't use carbon footprint studies from Europe that allows nuclear power to be relevant in the United States. You have to adjust for how we, we produce our power. And by the way, I'm a ragtop guy. So unless they have ragtop, forget it. I think somebody told me that, or I read somewhere that they don't even have enough power output for everyone to be driving electric cars. California doesn't, they've admitted it. I mean, California the, has power outages where they just shut it off. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if I go back and I think about that, what was it? 20, 28, 2700 mile little loop we did there in, in, in that, you know, West coast trip. I would add it stop a lot to power up. Oh, right. I mean, what's the, what's the range on, what's the range on, I mean, we really should have got that electric uh, truck with the electric, electric, electric pickup truck. I mean, electric, you know, what is it? 400, electric U-Haul. 400, 400 do, they have a, uh, do they have an electric U-Haul? No, they do, not. they do not. I know, I know. A couple of years away from that scenario, but it will be. I think Hertz, be... Hertz has all electric cars now that they're renting. Didn't you see all those Tom Brady commercials, Ken? Did I see all Tom Brady's commercials? No. Yeah, the, the, you know, the Hertz commercials he was doing at the end of the season there? No, nah, he wasn't paying attention. He was too worried about Tom retiring. I'm not worried. He said he did what he needed to do. I'm not one of those guys. I got my 20, I got my 20 years worth, but no one ever is going to see No one ever is going to see 20 years like that ever again, ever. I got it. Now, never say, never remember, say never. it's never going to happen. And by the way, not in my lifetime. And by the way, I watched them spring sucking to a whole new level too. So I've been on both ends of the spectrum where my team was so bad, they wouldn't bring film crews to the stadium to watch them. That's how bad they were, the Patriots in the old stadium. Hey, listen, we, we had blackout games in Philly. Oh, I know, dude, I know. They just wouldn't come. They just shut it off altogether. It was also because of the beer bottle throwing and the crap that would go on in the old Sullivan Stadium. Wait, 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 wait whoa, 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 whoa. Things whoa. that don't happen I in have Dallas. to hear from Keith <laughs> about something from 1968. And you're not talking about that. You're talking about the last 20 years. No, 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 no. That was before the 20 year run. That was that's what I'm saying. Before those 20 years is when they sucked and we had all the before horrible those 20 crap. years. We're talking about what? 2000? No. When that it's happened, when, when the bottles were being thrown, it was the 70s, maybe the 80s. And they kept on blaming Philadelphia for why you got plastic bottles in the stadium. <laughs> Listen, well, you know, we uh, all need that. Brady and and LeBron and other players are showing, besides their great skill and their and their great commitment and conditioning, 
the real advances in sports medicine too. Um, so I agree with Ken. Wow. It's not going to happen in our lifetime. You had, you had you had Chip Kelly who was like having the player swallow temperature monitors, right? And like throughout the practice, they could tell if you were hydrated, underhydrated, if you were you need to take a break, if you're about to cramp. Like I don't know what's in that sensor, but. I mean, we're talking about 2010, 11, 12, 13, right? Ish, that range. I don't know if they're still doing that, but that's no, that's, I, I, that's big brother. My my only point is is I agree with Ken. It's not going to happen again in our lifetime, but I, I bet you if you leap for a, you know a few generations, those longevities will become more commonplace. Yeah, maybe maybe not to Brady's extension, but well beyond. The five and you know six year average that was around just a decade ago. I think well, you're seeing I mean, they, they still have to come up with a test to, to to figure out whether you have CTE or not. Yeah, I mean, I know a guy named Antonio Brown that probably has it. I don't know, could could, <laughs> but they're not going to know until later, right? When they're dead and they're studying their brain. Yeah, yeah like like that. Uh, Linebacker in St. Night's name just slipped my mind. Junior Seau. Junior Seau, who was, was really a fan favorite in San Diego. He was a fan favorite in New England, too. Was he? Yeah. yeah he, he became was. a he was a patriot for a short period of time and they loved him. He's just a, he was a stand-up guy. It was just too bad. Yeah, yeah Seau was a, a restaurant you would go to before. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Charger Stadium. It had horrible parking, and you'd park at a say, shopping okay. center. And you take that elevated train over, and and they would meet at Sales Restaurant. Uh, it, it'd be a huge. You, you could, you know, it was a before and after game spot, and uh, everyone says that you know I never met him personally, but everyone says he was just an awesome guy. Well, Darren frequents San Diego. Darren, <laughs> had, were you able were you able to check out the old Charger Stadium before they moved to Los Angeles? I could care less about, I'm sorry, I just, there's one thing I don't care about and it's sports. So you guys, he tuned us out as soon as we started there, talking. There's about enough, yeah, there's enough, there's enough of you guys that care about it. It's not the, <laughs> not my, not for me. I don't know. And by the way, it, it's, it's completely being redone. I don't know how no. you're from the Northeast and not a sports fan. That boggles my mind. I can, I can rather do Stand anything else. How can, how can you be outside of New York City and not be a sports fan? You know, you got Boston on one side, you got New York City on the other. So how many professional teams are within a stone's throw? Lots of other stuff to do. By the way, the, the <laughs> latest breaking news is uh, Russell Wilson's going to the Broncos. Just flashed on my screen twice. Is that is uh, that confirmed? Did Adam Schefter no, get it? No, alive? no. It, it's, uh, you know, still speculation, but they. I I heard that rumor before, but again, with the rumors, you just never know. Yeah, they're saying all, it's pretty all, close. All we, to all we know is that Aaron Rodgers signed a four-year deal to stay in Green Bay. That's so. Green Bay will go another four years without a championship. That's great. And a future. I mean, I even said the same thing when they signed Elliott. So it's not team specific. You can't pay guys this great, this much. Um. With the salary cap and all that, I, I just sure, sure they can. They just keep on charging the guys buying the tickets. Yeah, <laughs> no, you, you still have the salary cap, and you still you still comes from you know, it's like SAG. It's supposed to be a union, and a union says oh, equal pay for union. equal seniority. And you're it's going, a union. No, it's it's again oppressive. The, the linemen salaries go down so the stars can make money. That's not a union mentality. Not in New England. Pay, ask, Tom Brady ask, took a lot of discounts. Oh, you're, MLB, you're definitely ask right. MLB, MLB owners and players association about unions. Hey, we also heard that Russell Wilson might possibly go to Philly, but that one fizzled out. That's not going to happen. I mean, they also said that uh, Deshaun Watson's going to Philly too. Well, yeah. Uh, but by the way, I, I think I said I did watch. Uh, it was actually on Sci Fi Channel as I was flipping through a couple of weeks, three four weeks back. They were doing a whole you know, episode on the like NFL super stadiums. And I was about the stadium in LA. I didn't realize like Jerry, Jerry dropped 2 billion. It was like 2.2 .2 billion in Dallas. They dropped 5 billion. Hey, in LA. 
All you have to do is find one of the Walmart heirs to marry, and you can do that too, George. <laughs> because five that, billion. So yeah, but so okay, so they spent twice and, as much money, and they got a Super Bowl eh, in their own building. Bowl. That was well, clear. They bought the Super Bowl, and they got some government concessions. <laughs> five billion dollars, Jerry. Bro. At least, and you know, I'm not a Jerry fan at all. Jerry at least funded his own stadium and practice facility. So sci-fi sci is, is taxpayer based. And I think that's wrong. Even though my brother, you know, was one of the ones helping build that with doing the metal bending. Uh, by I the just, way, as you guys are talking about sports, Apple's releasing a whole bunch of new products, new. You know, yeah. The, the ultra, the, the M1 ultra chip. No, the, yes. a new, a new uh, desktop, which is a good idea for them, and a new display. Snore, a desktop? Stuff. Wow, they're a little behind, aren't they? No, it, no, it's... It, oh, yeah, you, you're going to go buy a bunch... You're going out to buy a bunch of desktops right now? No, I'm not an Apple person either, but I need to stay on top of it, and, you know... So. The Mac Studio. Yeah, this... Um, we saw a sneak preview of some of this stuff about a week and a half ago. The M1 Ultra, which everyone thought was going to come out as the M2... And the uh, the Apple Studio, uh, and that's a real nice monitor. Well, it, it'll be interesting because Apple's really not refreshed their their line, their desktops and laptops until now. They've been running on the the old stuff for a while. I mean, well, their, their last tablet, their, that's, their that's tablet. Not, that's their, not true. That's really not true. No, I mean, they, their tablets they, and their phones update every year. Yeah. No, they're 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 they're. MacBook line came out with actually timely the M1 chip and it wasn't backlogged. So as Intel based computers had that extreme backlog, I, so that was planned or accidental. Um, it helped them get some penetration into um, business markets again, because you could get MacBooks. You now could now get. the question is, were they smart enough to manufacture their chips in the country? No. No, that's, they they, that, they just they, they just controlled the factory. Yeah, they need to move the factory here and then they'll be in good shape. Which there was that rumor, but it didn't occur. Yeah, Foxconn, right? I think it was like Wisconsin. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh well, it'll be even more interesting to see how things progress moving forward on the chip thing, because they're still backlogged on cars. They're still backlogged on all sorts of stuff. And it's not because of shipping. They literally just aren't making enough of them. Yeah, like I think I told you that if you go down to the, the uh, port and you see where they're storing cars, they're sitting there waiting for chips. Which will become an interesting dynamic because you're going, now you have a brand new 2021 that has been sitting on dock, some of them for five and six months. Yeah. And I, and I wonder... Appreciating. Well, yeah. I wonder if that's why they're jacking up the price with the options premium so that when prices fall back, you're going to pay full price for a one-year-old car. I have a friend that works for Ford and they've hired um, ECU runners. So the truck comes off the line with an ECU runner. They run it out to the parking lot somewhere, park it, unplug the ECU and take a golf cart back to the to the factory so they can drive the next one through the factory. So all these chassis are sitting in, in there without computers in them. And then they, as they can, they put new computers in them, but they maintain enough to keep the, the line moving. Wow. So they're literally just parking them. Yep. They're parking them. Yep. Wow. <clears throat> Production, man. It, it is part of the system for sure. Well, so. Let's, you know, you know, what happened to the good old days where there were no computers in cars and you just fire them up and, you know. My, my first car had six wires under the hood that went to the engine components. <laughs> six wires. I mean, even Ken's old car that left the ground, that didn't have a computer in it. That did <laughs> not have a computer in it. No, it did not. <laughs> Was that a Yugo? Yeah. A Yugo. A Yugo doesn't leave the, a Yugo doesn't leave the ground unless the wind blows it off the ground. This is true. Uh, by the way, on the way out the door, did anybody see the new Batman movie? I saw it last night. Oh. 
I think that I think that your review was pretty spot on. Although I'm not really sold on the Riddler being the best because there's only one other Riddler. So no, there's I mean, two. No, I, I said well, no. Right, yeah, the original Keith, but George is going to go back to his original statement. So don't age yourself again. But I said I, I said I no offense to Jim Carrey, but. If I gotta say, have, he was pretty a modern good, day, but yeah. but the hype was way overblown. It wasn't, but people were telling me this movie's better than any Marvel movie. This is better than I'm like, it was not, it did not live up to that hype. It was a good movie to your point. It was made almost like the Joker, where it was more human, like this is more realistic that somebody could pull this off. Although he did take an explosion to the face and had not a mark on his face, so that part's a little bit off, but. They, they they did make it a little bit more realistic. Like George likes the idea of feeling like he could be a superhero someday. Um, that was 100% true. But I think the Joker did the best job of that because they made it about mental health. And obviously that Joker was very well played. Um, I, I, it was a, yeah, it was a good movie. But I like I said, I, I and I think they did a good job of separating it from all the other ones by changing the story and the timeline. And I think I, I've, I love Catwoman. She was great. Um, and I like the Penguin. I like the way they added them all in in a different a different style and a different way. But it definitely wasn't as good as they made it sound like this was better than Endgame. And I'm like, no, it and didn't have that. You would be a that. good Penguin. You would be a really good Penguin, as I think Me? about this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What is that? Even, really? Why, Darren? Come on, give me some, because I'm a fat guy. Is that what you're saying? No, no, not at all. Just I think you'd have the character for it. Personality, everything. Penguin? I don't know. Danny DeVito was the penguin that I loved. And I don't know if I'm like Danny DeVito. I think I think Danny DeVito did a great job. Danny DeVito was a good penguin. Yeah, he was. But I'm going to go with Burgess Meredith on the best penguin. You don't even know who that is. Of course I know <laughs> who it is. It, it's Mickey from Rocky. Yeah, Mickey from Rocky. But he was also the original penguin <laughs> in the old Batman. Am Forget I wrong, Keith? No. His life. His we got to jump, guys. Thank you, easy. See you, Pete. His, See you. Talk his, to you soon. His, his lifetime achievement was rocky come on man all right but still wah, 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 wah. that was the original penguin come i on. saw i saw and you and, and you haven't lived until you have to wait a week on the same bat channel the same bat time <laughs> to figure out how the episode's gonna end this is that's true still that still happens now they're doing the same thing now with all the episodes coming yeah, out but you can you can watch them all in one day if you want to no, no, right. no. You, you'd have to wait a whole you have to wait till they're all out to do that oh yeah 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 so, so, but the Keith's right. Just one quick one, Keith. Do you ever see the show Lost? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so I remember watching that back in the day, and, and now I I speed watched it. Now I I we, we binge watched it, and I gotta be honest, I don't know how I ever did it back then because watching Lost is so frustrating, and I, I can't imagine having to wait from week to week when the way that the way they ended each show. They created, yeah. but Ken, they created so much more buzz over such a longer amount of time. Right. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. I just, I can't imagine being able to put up with it now that we've been so spoiled with being able to jump right to the next, because that's what happens now. I'll watch a show and go, oh, that's good. I got to see the next one. And then they got me watching five in a row because I get caught up in it. Yeah. Gilded, Age, Gilded Age on HBO Max. Excellent show. Check it out. Gilded Age. I saw the thing for it, but I haven't seen it yet. I'm still, I'm still like, we got two Star Treks going side, side, side by side. You got the end of Discovery and you got the beginning of Picard season two. So like, I'm, I'm more, I'm a Star Wars guy, not a Star Trek Listen, guy. I do both. I do both. I'm not, I'm going to swing both ways. I get it. Well, uh, I don't know if I would use that language, but okay. <laughs> All yeah, good. You know, people won't watch with me because I go through and point out everything that's wrong. <laughs> Having studied, you know, at JPL, you go, no. That's okay, so true. George, note to self, do not watch Dallas Cowboys football with Keith and do not watch Star Trek with Keith. <laughs> okay. I think I think I'm pretty balanced when it comes to, to uh, <laughs> Dallas Cowboy commentary. <laughs> Okay, I, I, we're gonna end. We're gonna end that right here. Thanks, everybody, and we'll catch you on the next one. Right. Take it easy.